Hey, if you remember, in one warm summer some time ago, we made the JBL Killer Beast portable Bluetooth speaker with one goal to be the JBL bestseller loudspeaker, the JBL Extreme Wireless Speaker. We actually managed to do that. If you want to see the JBL Killer Beast 1 DIY project, then click on the letter I and check it out. The time we spent for the project was so good that once again we took up the challenge to make something bigger and more impressive. JBL Killer Beast 2. Yes, a portable wireless boombox speaker with external subwoofer. It could be the first in the world 2.1 portable speaker system. This time the goal is to beat one of the JBL Partybox battery powered portable party speakers. If you are ready, turn up the volume and let's go. To make your own individual boombox, the first thing you'll need is to find somewhere where to do it. Ideally granddad's hiding place from grandma, that's usually where all the tools you need are. Then you'll need some speakers, I recommend getting a car audio component set. They sound good and don't need big boxes. You will also need some wooden boards. Plywood, particle board and even OSB are good to make a boombox. Make the box as big as you need to fit your chosen speakers. The bigger the box, the more bass you can get. But don't go overboard with the size of the box. You can of course do the math using the speaker TS specs. But this is not a hi-fi. It's a garden party boombox where you have to enjoy the process. Once all the plates are cut, screw them together. Don't spare the screws so that power doesn't leak out. We'll hide them later. So this is the table we have right now, which will amaze the neighbors with this loud sound. Hopefully they're prepared. As the heart of everything, we chose the Hertz DSK 130.3 car component set, which has a 5-inch mid-bass driver, speaker crossover and 0.9-inch tweeter. This set costs around $100. To make the speaker holes in the box, you need to put them on a boombox to see where they fit the best. It's nice that manufacturer has printed templates on the packaging. This will make it easier for us to draw holes we need. These templates really helped out. Now draw the locations of the squeakers relative to the center axis of the mid base. Once the necessary holes are drawn, all that's left to do is cut them out. If you're under 18, ask your grandmother to do the cutting, because I don't think you'll need a boombox while having a few fingers missing. Be careful. We don't have professional carpenters in tech screw teams, so it is what it is. If the tweeter adapter doesn't fit neatly, then file the hole until it fits well. Once done, cut out both mid base driver holes. Try fitting the speaker. If it doesn't fit properly, then take a file and start working. This is the consequence of the tech screw channel not having carpenter and having cooks to do it. Once the holes are filed, the speaker should fit perfectly. We will install two 2.7 inch diameter base reflex ports on this boombox. If you want to know what port to put, we always take it above the FS parameter of the speaker, or above the free air resonant frequency. In our case, the port will be tuned to 100-110 Hz. The dimensions of the port can be calculated using base reflex port calculators. If you have problem with this, then write in the comments, we will help you. Mark where the ports will be and then cut out these two holes. With the help of your sidekick, cut out the holes. But as usual for us, the parts don't fit and we continue to file until the port fits in place. After a few hours, both ports are in place. Nice nostrils. The boombox could have been made closed. But such nostrils make the bottom end stick out nicely. More aggressive sound. Since carpentry is sounding foreign to us, we take a file and beautify all the imperfections. Mark the places where you'll need to drill holes to screw in the mid bass drivers. For the speaker, we'll use claw nuts, as this is the best solution as the speakers will need to be removed several times. Once all the nuts are installed, the mid bass driver and tweeter need to be attached to audio crossover. The wires should preferably be soldered together, with heat shrink tubing installed after that. Then solder the wires from the audio crossover to the mid bass drivers. The most important thing here is to keep the plus and minus polarities when connecting all the wires, so that they don't mix together somewhere. And you can screw the speakers inside the enclosure. To make the sound softer, put 100% cotton in the box, it absorbs bass energy very well. We put the cotton in a protective sock of the wine bottles. With hot glue, stick the two audio crossovers somewhere in the bottom of the box. Put neatly, so that they don't fall off and wiggle around the box. Using the same hot glue, glue the two cotton bags behind the speakers, directly opposite of each other. Then install two speaker terminals so the amplifier can be connected. Then solder the wires that can go to the crossover and then both terminals can be screwed in. With hot glue, Close the holes coming from the speaker terminals. In the middle of the box, it is desirable to glue at least one support rib to prevent unwanted movement of the box. 
The glue is then smeared around the perimeter of the box and the lid can be placed on top. Then with a putty knife designed for wooden surfaces, all screw points and port irregularities should be sealed. Then grind, fill out the holes and repeat until you get a good result. Sadly for tech screw team it never happens. In the lower part of the box screw in 3 or 4 screws where the legs will be afterwards. This way you'll also be able to paint all the sides of the box at the same time. We take black paint, a sponge and first of all paint the inside with the base reflex parts so that they are in a nice black color. Take a paint roller and start painting the bottom part of the boombox speaker box. So that we can then put it down and paint the other parts of the box. Then turn the box upside down and you can continue painting the rest of the parts. Paint precisely and without hurry. Remember that you will need to paint at least 2 or 3 coats on the box to make the color last longer and look nicer. Once our layers are dry, take out the screws and attach the support legs. We will only put 3 feet because then the box is more stable on uneven surfaces. After painting put back all the speakers. We will glue the tweeters using PVA glue to avoid air blowing past them. Just wipe off the excess glue when you need to. We will secure the mid base drivers using extra double sided tape. Solder the wires and then we can put them back. And screw them in place, but screw them in opposite pairs so that they tighten evenly. All that's left is to put on speaker grills to protect the speakers from mechanical damage. And here's the result, dark as hell. Congratulations, you've done one third of the work. But as promised at the beginning of the video, this will be a custom made first in the world 2.1 portable speaker system. So in the same way as the boombox, you have to make a subwoofer. Or you can do as we did, find a ready made small passive subwoofer. We found a Dantex sub 2000 push pull type bandpass subwoofer. But it had dead drivers. So we replaced them both with one good Polk Audio 8 inch subwoofer driver. Also we saw the new wires to the sub and then the box can be screwed shut. The sub should also be preferably painted in the same color as the boombox to get the same look. As we said before, you have two options if you want to get more bass. Make a small box with a subwoofer driver or you can save time and find a ready made subwoofer like we did. While we were waiting for the last stage parts to finish this project, the painted speaker boxes managed to get dusty. Very nice. You've probably been wondering for a long time how we are going to power all this. What's the amplifier going to be? So now the parts have arrived. The amplifier is an Aurelic up to Stream M2.1 which provides a 2.1 system configuration, wireless connection and sufficient power. If you want to know more about this miracle, click on the i button and watch the review video. We put the amplifier board, attach the same speaker thermals to the box and use 6 pieces 18650 lithium ion cells for the power supply, which provides the necessary voltage to get the full power of the boombox. The battery pack is removable for other projects too. And when you need it, put it in and go party. We mark the outputs on the power amp box to make it easier to connect everything. Make sure to glue anti-slip feet on amp box so that it's like glue to our boom box. And here's our JBL Killer Beast 2. Add 3 wires and you're ready to party. Turn on the amplifier, turn up the volume, adjust the treble and bass to your liking and rock the neighborhood. Or your grandparents who just went to bed. Now a quick sound and bass test with the boombox alone and then with 2.1 full configuration. Let's go. So this boombox is much much more capable than we expected. The amp module is even more powerful than the existing speakers. Could have been easily made bigger for the Big Hertz 160.3. So it's time to make your own boombox kit. Tag us on Instagram at TechScrews and share your results. Next time we'll upload a test against the JBL Party Boss 100. It's going to be a real surprise. Just like it was for us. And thanks for watching. If you have 101 questions. Feel free to post them in the comments. Let's build your boombox together. For now, see ya.